we need to test security in. This seems a little bit obvious. In this talk, we will show you how to integrate. Okay. In this talk, we will show you how to uh, empower your QA and integrate more testing into the QA phase of the development lifecycle. Okay, so uh, my name is Adi Berlinkov. I started as automation uh, tester. And after that, I worked as a full stack developer and then cybersecurity. My name is Iris Levari. I've been integrating and wrapping security tests into SDRC for the past 11 years. In this talk, Adi and I will explain uh, the process that we actually implemented in two companies for the past two years uh, in multiple QA teams and with great success. Uh, we know what works, what doesn't work, and we will show how, how to make this work for you as well. Okay. So, as, as more and more companies are transitioning from uh, waterfall methodology to agile methodology, uh, there are more and more, there is a high increase in the number of uh, releases per year. And as a result, in, while we had time in uh, waterfall methodology, we don't have time in agile methodology. We don't have the time, the time slot to do the security testing. Therefore, the solution that we are going to talk about is using the QA phase to integrate more security testing. Okay. The security team resources are very limited. They are constrained. This is nothing new. Also, the result of this situation that uh, the versions who are going up to production with no security at all, this is not new either. So who among us in the audience didn't push an unprotected version to production in the past? It's okay, raise your hand. It's a safe place. We will not judge you because we have all done that. Me too. Okay. Okay, so um, often we talk about developer, but we rarely mention the QA team. So we propose to uh, the, the solving the problem by working together with the QA team and uh, we'll, they help us to uh, perform the security testing. In best of uh, our experience, the QA team and the security team can work very well together. Why we choose the QA team? Because they are running the test in every sprint, they are thinking out of the box, and they already have an uh, environment uh, ready, and they know the application very well, the business and the functionality, and because of that, it's very easy to insert additional test cases. So right now, the QA team already perform some security testing. They're not aware about that. That is, uh, this testing is also relevant for the uh, security. And because of that, the application security not aware that this test already done. So we want to increase the security coverage for the QA team and to uh, give the visibility to the application security team. So this is the list of uh, security testing area for QA. For example, uh, authentication and authorization, uh, such as uh, session handling, uh, password, uh, weak password, uh, access to direct, uh, direct access, uh, also sens uh, sending sensitive data in GET request, upload huge file or file that contain uh, malicious code, uh, SSL and TLS version and weak ciphers, uh, security response headers such as uh, XSS protection, click jacking, and error handling. Okay, this is the actual process for a system level uh, workflow, and we will take this one by one. So the first step in the first, so these are the steps and the responsible parties. In the first step, the application security person working with the system architect or the product develop, uh, the product manager, review the feature, the, the system features, 
the high level overview and the uh, sensitive data. If the system contains sensitive data or contains sensitive functionality, then there is real reason to do security testing. Otherwise, there is no, secu there's no, no point in doing security testing. If it's relevant, then in the second phase, the uh, application security person does the threat modeling. It does the data analysis, uh, the architecture, and the business logic review, uh, trying to think about uh, relevant use cases. In the next step, the application security, together with the QA manager or the QA uh, person, review existing use cases, uh, test cases that are in the test suite. Uh, to review if the uh, QA is already doing some testing in, in those areas that we mentioned before. If yes, uh, then he can elaborate on that or he can uh, write new test cases with the QA. So this is the heart of the matter. We are working with them. This is a joint uh, process uh, where in any step of the, of the process, we are working with the QA. Uh, in the last uh, step, the QA person uh, integrate uh, the test into the automatic test suite and run it uh, and open the tickets. He's, he's supposed to do, to do that and tag it as security related. So this is the system level process. This is done on a major version or first time that you are doing any uh, security review on the, on the system itself. This is the feature level process. This is uh, quicker than the system level process because it's done only on the features that are in scope in the specific sprint. So for every feature, the application security person uh, does a feature review with the developer, with the specific feature developer. It overview the functionality and the data. If sensitive data or sensitive functionality is related, then process continues and he does the asset and the business logic analysis. Based on that, he, he and the QA fill up a form that I will show in the next slide that analyzes the use case uh, and uh, write the specific steps to test. The next step, the QA performs the automatic testing and open the Jira ticket. Okay, so uh, let's do a quick simulation. This is login page. It's very simple functionality. Uh, the user insert the username, the password, and after that, click on the login uh, button. So uh, it's very simple scenario, but there is a lot of tests that the QA can perform. For example, user enumeration, it can, uh, for example, uh, uh, analyze the error message. Uh, it can uh, check the lockout mechanism uh, to see the get request if uh, it sent uh, sensitive data on the get request. And there is a lot of tests for only simple functionality like that. Okay, so in the process, the application security person with the QA person fill up this form. In this form, there's the name of the test, the vulnerability description. Remember, the QA, uh, they're nice people, but they don't have the knowledge that they need us to provide them. So the vulnerability description is very important because it uh, gives the rationale. It explains what the vulnerabilities actually is, how the attacker can exploit it, and what are the possible outcomes. In the test scenario, there are uh, simple test steps like which are very common knowledge to the QA because they are doing this all the time, like uh, enter a valid username, non-valid password, repeat 10 times, then check again with valid username and valid password, verify that the user is locked out. If it's locked out, uh, wait for the amount of time for the release, automatic release time, and check the re automatic release parameter. Uh, in the recommendation part of the form, we specify exactly what are the best practice expected results, uh, what headers, for example, to expect, if it's okay, what uh, behavior to expect, if it's not okay. Um, so.
these are actual uh, test, test cases, that, uh, the screenshots that we took from our test suites. Uh, I have, in my company, many QA uh, products, uh, many QA teams. Any one of them is using a different this test suite, so uh, the test suites are variant, but the tests are all the same. So the text data is the same. So it doesn't matter if it's test suite is different, but since we we are filling the same form, in the end the QA person is entering it into its own test suite. So here we can see uh, test, test, uh, test cases for lockout mechanism, for XSS filter, for TLS 1.0 check-in, and for click check-in protection. And uh, do you want to explain the benefit for the QA team? And check. Okay. The benefit for the QA team is that they are getting empowered, they are getting knowledgeable, and they are getting uh, to be more valuable to the company. Uh, from my experience, uh, they are feeling pretty awesome after, after doing this phase. Um, the feedbacks are always surprising. Usually they say, okay, don't you need the developers here with, with you in the meeting? No, no, this is only for the test persons. And then they say, okay, are you doing any security testing? And I said, no, we are not doing any security testing. Okay, can you show me the login test that you are doing? Ah. Of course. And then you see tons and tons of login uh, checks, breakout of logins, termination in the middle of login, uh, cookie manipulation, which they are, they are just not aware that these are, these are part of the security test that we are actually conducting. So uh, in these cases, we are getting very good feedback from them because they, are, um, they feel that we understand the use case. The, uh, we review it, we find some use cases that they didn't think about, and we add them. And from then on, it's automatic. Every sprint, we're not touching anything, and they're happy, and we're happy, and it's, this is a win-win situation. Okay, so uh, we, win we want to increase the amount and the coverage of the security testing by using existing resources. Uh, we don't do any change on the process, we just use existing resources. In addition, we give the security team visibility to the, the effect that found by the testing. Questions? Yes. Okay, first they think, they think that this is not relevant for them. Uh, then they are a little bit surprised that we are speaking the same language because we are talking about test cases and about steps. And then when we do a drill down, we, we usually take the uh, common, common subject and we give examples. And then they say, oh, we have that. And this was really surprising because I was explaining error messages and what information the hacker can extract from error messages. And then they said, oh, we have that. We have that in two places. And then I said, within the same meeting, OK, so let's uh, open up the ticket. Can you show me? Uh, and he showed me three places. He opened, as a result of the one hour meeting, four JIRA tickets. And he handled it himself. The next version was already fixed. This four Geo tickets were already fixed in the next version. So this was very surprising for me because to get developers to open tickets, it's somewhat, uh, it's, not auto, it's, it's not flowing as it was flowing with the QA. So he, he said, okay, I know this, I want to push this. And he just handled the whole process from there on. So it was really, really simple for us. So it streamlined everything. Um, um, and I did that with QA uh, team leaders, and I did that also with the team members. It doesn't matter, they are speaking the same language. Um, 
I was like, they are first intimidated because we are the bad guys, we are the bad wolf, uh, Darth Vader's like. And, um, and when they start talking and communicating, they see that we speak the same language as them. And then everything makes, it's, it's getting simpler. More questions? More questions? Actually, I, I, did, I did try to and integrate so. QA three times. More of a comment than an actual question. I think the, it's not that QA and testing is new, but the whole point of giving yes. an actual methodology of simple issues to find for QA would probably make a good OWASP uh, project by kind of like producing a, a document that you can just hand out as a giveaway to organizations. Just something to consider. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a good idea. We, we thought about doing that. Uh, we will pl publish after the after the conference in our GitHub and Excel with all the uh, all the testing areas, which are very simple. Uh, they don't need to do a elaborated XSS uh, test. This is not what we are expecting. We are giving them all the only the tests that are very simple um, uh, and more common and will be easy for a QA to implement. So I tried that, doing that, uh, turning QA into a pen tester. I failed two times in two different companies. <laughs> I'm not doing that any anymore. <laughs> not, this is not the plan. So if they're checking TLS 1.0 because they're right-clicking on the certificate, if they're checking headers, which is simple, if they're checking file upload, which is very simple, if they're doing login, uh, breakouts, which they are doing in any case. So we start by doing the things that they are already doing and doing a little bit of variations. And then it looks normal to them because we are not turning them into a pen testers. Full fledged pen testing is different. Okay. okay. More questions? Oh, sorry. Do you find that it's better to have uh, dedicated security champions in QA or to have the knowledge uh, transmitted as broadly as possible? Okay. I for, uh, uh, I'm all for the broader, but you, you need to start with somebody. So um, my recommendation start with the team, with the QA team, uh, with, with the team leader. Start with the team leader. If, if the team leader is not uh, security sensitive or has no inclination to, towards security, then take another person in the QA team who is more interested and start infiltrating into the QA team from that point, of, from that door, because eventually we, know we want everybody, the, the QA teams are getting smaller and smaller. Once we had teams seven, 10, nine, now, since everything is automated, three, four, or even two is more the, the normal size. So in any case, you get the team leader plus one, almost all the team. So I think gradually we're covering everybody, and gradually we can give them more and more test cases. So, and the best thing, it's automatic, and they are doing this actually in every sprint, and I don't need to tell them, remind them, or review anything with, with them because it's automatic. Okay, more questions? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.